What up, Kalish crew, and welcome to Kalish Eat and Greet. So today is actually Monday, um, and so yesterday was, was Juneteenth, and that was Sunday, the 19th, um, but our work actually gave us today off in observance of that, and I wanted to, like, do something today instead of yesterday to, like, because I'm off, you know, and I don't want to just, like, take advantage of, like, having a day off because of Juneteenth, you know what I mean? So I wanted to do something with it that was that that mattered i guess you know so i was looking around online for things to do on like sunday or monday and um i found this uh really interesting call it's th this art installation called the heidelberg project in downtown detroit or near downtown detroit and it's like in this old abandoned neighborhood um it's like every everything in the art installation is made out of recycled materials um and I think the goal of it is to bring awareness to um, like issues of poverty in Detroit and the struggle of African Americans in our nation and things like that. So I thought that was like something really cool. I've never been there. I thought it was something like really cool that I would like to go see and support and things like that. Um, it's a nonprofit. So let me actually read you the description of what it is because I can't do it justice, you know what I mean? Okay, so this is from their website, The Heidelberg Project. It says, our mission, The Heidelberg Project is an outdoor art environment in the heart of an urban area and a Detroit-based community organization with a mission to improve the lives of people and neighborhoods through art. And a little bit about the artist, the artist's name is Tyree Guyton. Um, it says, primarily a painter and sculptor, Tyree has also been described as an urban environmental artist. He, was wa he has waged a personal war on urban blight in Detroit's east side, transforming his neighborhood into a living indoor-outdoor art gallery. Okay, so it's his neighborhood. That's cool. Through his art, Guyton has drawn attention to the plight of Detroit's forgotten neighborhoods and spurred discussion and action. So here is a picture of the artist. In 1986, artist Tyree Guyton returned to Heidelberg, the street where he grew up on in Detroit's east side, and found it in shambles, riddled with drugs and deepening poverty. Bruised by the loss of three brothers to the streets, Guyton was encouraged by his grandfather to pick up a paintbrush instead of a weapon and look for a solution. Guyton and his grandpa began, began by cleaning up vacant lots on Heidelberg Street. From everything they collected, Guyton transformed the street into a massive art environment. So in 1988, supporters of Guyton helped to organize his effort and the Heidelberg Project was officially incorporated. So that was the year I was born. So that's when this basically came together. So the Heidelberg Project site remains undisrupted in a community that is quite literally desecrated. More than 35 years of renewing the human spirit can now successfully translate into building the community. Yeah, that's just a little bit, well, a lot about the project. So let's go check it out, guys. Let's do it. All right, so we're here. I'm walking down to the end of the street so I can start right at the beginning here. Looks like a pretty short block. Um, let me show you kind of like what we got going.
So I figured we'd take a little trip to the Detroit River. Um, this is what they call the Riverside Park, I believe. Um, it's pretty small. There's like a little um, area where you can eat. There's a covered area over there. Um, it's right next to the bridge to Canada. So it's Canada over there. We're very close. Um, there's a couple swings, there's some rocks, and there's some like, things for kids to do. And it's just really pretty being by the water. I don't, I rarely get to do that, which I could if I wanted to. It's right here, but um, I was already in the area of Detroit, so I figured after that art um, exhibit, I would oh, just come sit by the water for a little bit and enjoy some peacefulness. Even though there's a lot of construction sounds going on um, here, it was a hell to get here. Um, no traffic or anything, it was just detour after detour and like gravel roads and big construction trucks in the way, so. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of construction noises, but I still find it useful as being in the water. So, um, enjoy, guys. I'll probably be here for a little bit, catching some sun. Then I'm gonna head home and who knows? Such a nice day out. It is like in the mid 80s, but the breeze is really nice here by the water. So yeah, I think I'm gonna head home. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. It is now time for question of the week. Um, so I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask this question and I'll answer it and you guys can also answer it down in the comments section below um, I have this book here that I'm using lately for the question of the week So it's giving me a lot of options <laughs> This one just like hit me today um, Who would you like to sing a duet with and what would you sing? Uh, I never think of the answer to the question before I start filming <laughs> uh, Give me one second. You know what? I'd have to say Amy Lee. I would need to I would need to do a duet with Amy Lee from Evanescence. Um, she just, her voice is insane. Her voice is absolutely insane. Um, and to be able to sing like harmonies with her, I feel like it would just like pop and sound so cool um, if I didn't screw it up, which I probably would, <laughs> let's be real. But yeah, what would I sing with her? Um, maybe like, I mean, probably one of her songs, but if I could sing anything, hmm. You know what would be, what would be really cool to sing? with anyone but with her it would be really cool to sing it would be the rose by i think it's by bet midler um my mom like what i don't know back like me and my family used to sing karaoke all the time like at her house like she would throw on youtube and we would sing karaoke all together um and one day we sang the rose and i mean we all knew it like i, I didn't even know i consciously knew it i guess i subconsciously knew it and uh, me and my siblings and my mom all sang it and it was just we were all doing harmonies and it was just like so beautiful and so much fun um so i think it'd be really cool to sing sing that i mean obviously with anyone who's good but with evanescence or amy lee that would be insane i mean so probably need more people because honestly the harmonies in that song are really like full you know what i mean i feel like a duet but a duet might be cool like but I feel like we need a couple more people. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess that's my answer to the question of the day. Guys, if you have an answer to the question of the day, which was who would you sing a duet with and what would you sing, please leave the answer to that down in the comments below. And thanks, guys.
Hey guys, so here is my stuffed bell pepper. There's a lot of juice coming out of this. I'm gonna see if I can get you a cross section so you can see this a little bit better. So lighting isn't great today, but you can kind of see like how juicy this is on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've let it cool off like a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and try a bite. I'm gonna get a bite off of the top part that has like pepper, all the insides and the cheese. So hopefully I'll get everything in this one bite, a big bite. Not all over my hands. Mm. So the pepper itself is still a little bit, it's got a little crunch to it, which is, I like that. Um, when my mom used to make stuffed peppers for us, they would be like really soft and that's good too, but. I had this in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Then I bumped it up to 400 degrees and did an extra 10 minutes. So a total of 30 minutes. Mm. And <laughs> there's all this extra that was on the outside because usually when you make stuffed pepper, stuffed peppers, there's a little too much stuffing for the peppers, and I'm not mad about that. Mm. This is a good balance. Not too much rice, not too much meat. It's very veggie heavy, if you guys noticed. Um, I am a fan. Mm. Man, that was fun. <laughs> mm. And that Daya dairy-free cheese, you guys, so smooth when it melts. Mm. I know I say that like every time. But if you are trying to go dairy-free, if you're trying to be vegan, I really recommend Daya. It's uh, called um, mozzarella style shreds. So freaking good. Um, I did add shiitake mushrooms in this too, which I know mushrooms are not like a typical ingredient in stuffed peppers, but I love shiitake mushrooms. I hate like regular white mushrooms. Hate them. But these, mm. <laughs> well, thank you for um, watching my little recipe video. And I'm going to finish up dinner here and get on to the next thing. All right, I'll see you guys soon. So it's that time of the week and it is video of the week. So I have been doing a lot of research on pre-diabetes, how to reverse it, um, different strategies you, you can use and like just the science behind it and everything. Um, and I came across a lot of videos by this guy named Dr. Sten Ekberg. And I don't know how like seriously to take this guy. It says doctor in front of his name. And I know all the people, all the doctors and all the, you know, researchers out there have tons of different, different, different ideas about diets and how to lose fat on your body or how to, you know, reverse, uh, blood sugar issues, all that. So, I mean, there's a lot of different opinions out there take it or leave it, right? But I got really into this guy's videos and um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this video that I wanna say is our video of the week. It's called Top 10 Foods You Must Eat to Lower Blood Sugar. Hello, health champions. Did you know that most people in the world have a problem with high blood sugar? So today I'm gonna give you the top 10 foods to help you lower blood sugar. But more importantly, we need to understand what normal blood sugar is and if and when it ever gets too low. Also, despite all the attention given to blood sugar, it may not be the first marker you want to be concerned with. So super, you know, obviously going to be informative. This guy does a lot of graphs. He does a lot of uh, <laughs> science in his videos. Like there was one video I watched where he was showing what polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and saturated fats looked like in their cell forms, like with the bonds and stuff with the hydrogen and carbon and all that. 
and I'm like, okay, I'm learning some chemistry. <laughs> but um, this video specifically is really just straightforward. Um, it has a lot of information packed into it, but it's all very easy to understand. And um, I don't know, I guess let me know what you guys think about his ideas and opinions in the comments because I don't really know what to think of it. My, uh, my brother looked him up after I talked to my brother about this guy and my brother's like, he's a chiropractor. <laughs> he's not, I mean, so he's like a doctor. It's nothing, no shade against chiropractors, but like, I guess I would need to know what his experience is specifically with, you know, this kind of health stuff. So um, I definitely still enjoyed the videos and it's still fun to learn about things, even if they're not, you know, hard facts in the medical world or maybe they are. Um, but it's good to hear other people's opinions and kind of forge your own opinions from there. So I really thought this video was interesting. And if any of you are struggling with, you know, blood sugar issues, maybe he would give you some ideas on how to uh, combat that. As always, guys, I'll link this video and his channel down in the description box below. So if you're interested in that kind of video, definitely give it a look. And yeah, that's my video of the week. What up guys? So we are about to get into our product review of the week, but before we get into that, I wanted to kind of just like sit down and chat with you guys and give you an update on like how my new lifestyle is going, like eating wise, diet wise. Um, surprisingly really, really well. It's going well. Um, like my eating. There's been like a couple times where I have like, I don't want to say eating something bad, like, but I want to, you know, I'll say like eating something that wasn't part of my plan. Um, not something that I would have wanted to eat. And even those things were actually fine and good, um, in my opinion. So that's going well. The one thing that like I'm getting hung up on, which I know I shouldn't be, um, and this is probably what my downfall has been every single time I've tried to like get healthy, but I have been weighing myself every single day and... Um, you know, because I've been tracking all my calories, I've been tracking all my carbs, my fats, my proteins, my potassium, and my sodium on this app, and I'll probably show you guys a little bit about, about that later, um, like what my goals are for all that, but be, just because I'm curious, I keep weighing myself, and I mean, that's the one thing my doctor said in her little note, you know, what, okay, so basically if you guys don't know, if you're, maybe this is your first video you're, you've, you've seen, um, about a month ago I got a blood work, my, got my blood work done, and my doctor responded um, to the test results and said, hey, you are pre-diabetic, like your blood sugar is high, um, you just basically losing weight is going to help you. So she said, just lose weight. Um, and she's like, we'll talk about it more when I see you next month. So I'm going to see her in a few days here now, but, um, you know, I'm just kind of been on my own this past month with this and just trying to figure it out and do my best. I think I've been doing fine. It's just I'm obsessing about the weight loss thing and I know I shouldn't be because the whole point is to get my blood sugar down. The whole point is to eat healthier, but I know that weight loss is going to come from that. But I've only lost 16 pounds since... So today, what's today's date? Okay, so today is June 23rd. I started this, the first day of this whole thing was May 25th. So almost a month and I've only lost 16 pounds. I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. Um, and especially because like I've been kind of sitting around that 14, 15, 16, 17 pounds lost mark for like, I think a week or maybe like eight or nine days or something. And it's just frustrating because I know that's not what I really should be worried about as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and like not overeating and not overeating carbs and, you know, getting all my vegetables in, my fruits, staying away from simple sugars, whatever, you know, all the stuff that I've been doing getting outside a little bit more walking but you know diet culture makes you makes you care about your weight <laughs> just the, our culture makes you think about your weight our society and um i mean i was i was trained you know from my parents even to like think about my weight as the most important part about me and it's tough like doing this and being a kind of like obsessive about it and you'll see when you see my spreadsheet <laughs> um that i'm getting kind of obsessive but you know um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I think the one thing I'm frustrated with is, like, I'm not losing enough weight, which I'm also frustrated with myself that I care about that and that, that I'm frustrated with that, so. But overall, it's honestly going awesome. Um, the only couple times that I've had something that I didn't, like, exactly plan on having, um, there was one day I was getting my new phone, so this was pretty early on in it, like, not quite a month ago, but maybe, like, three weeks ago. I was going to get my new cell phone and the guy was like, oh, it's going to take about, like I was, I'd already been there, you know, standing there and like working with the guy for like an hour. And then finally we got the phone pretty much set up and he's like, okay, so it's going to take about 20 minutes. I got to turn the phone on 
and like transfer all your data. I don't even know what he was doing. And I was like, oh, 20 minutes. Can I just come right back? He's like, yeah, totally. Um, so I was like, I'll be back in 20 minutes. And I was at this point starving and I didn't have time to like go home and come back to eat something, but I like knew I needed to eat. So I was like, I looked across the street and there was a firehouse subs and I'm like, okay, maybe I can get something healthy there. So I got a medium, which is like, there's like a large, which is like big. Then there's like a medium, which is half. And then a small, which is half of that. So that one would have been like one bite for me. I think those are for kids. So I got a medium, uh, turkey only like meat wise only on wheat with all the vegetables. And that was it. And it was good. I think it I can't remember what it was like, maybe 600 calories or something. I tracked it and everything. It was fine. Um, so that day I had that, um, I don't know what else did I do that was like not part of the plan. That's the only time I've eaten out. Oh yeah, there was another day. My sibling was over and them and my brother ordered pizza. And of course I wasn't eating pizza, but uh, my sibling actually got these mac and cheese bites and it's from the place that they work at. So they know they're like, they're really good. Like these mac and cheese bites are amazing. And they were like, do you want to try one? And I'm like, no, no, no. And I said no a couple times. And finally they were on their last piece. And they're like, are you sure you don't want one bite? Like, this is the last one. And I'm like, I mean, you've been talking these up so much. I got to try it. So I did have a bite. Oh, not, I didn't even have the whole mac and cheese bite. I just had a bite of it. It was good. Um, was it worth it? I don't know. Probably, there was probably only like 20 calories in what I took a bite of. So yeah, totally worth it for 20 calories. But I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't sit there and eat, you know, a bunch of them. It wasn't that good. But yeah, those are literally the two things that stick out in my mind of like things that I like didn't quite plan on doing. Everything else has been great. Like I am on it. And, and I think what keeps helping me is that, um, I just keep remembering, like if I really want something bad, I keep remembering like, dude, this is more serious than just like losing weight. You know, like this isn't like about vanity. Like I am pre, pre diabetic. You know what I mean? Like if I screw this up, like this is my chance basically to turn it around to where I don't get diabetes or whatever. So like, if I screw this up, like my whole life could change and be different and harder and yeah. Um, so I think that's what's helping me is just remembering that it's a serious thing, you know, finally got to that point. But yeah, things are going great. I do have a vegan pizza in the oven and we're gonna try that out for the next segment of this vlog. So uh, I'm gonna go grab it out of the oven and I'll be right back. Okay, so vegans don't be grossed out. <laughs> this, I did put shrimp on this, um, but that's because I don't eat cheese. I don't eat really dairy products, but I do eat meat, so I'm not quite vegan. Um, I'm not vegan at all. So this is the Amy's No Cheese Vegetarian, what is it? Roasted Vegetable Pizza. I think I showed you this on maybe my first vlog where I was doing like my shopping haul, grocery shopping haul. I haven't tried it yet, but the reason I wanted to try this for you guys is because last night I tried Amy's Vegan Supreme Pizza, and that's not this one, um, but it was so good, it blew me away, and I was like, oh, I wish I would have tried that for my subscribers on YouTube, because I literally was blown, like, I don't get blown away that often by food, especially something that's vegan and, like, supposedly healthy for you, but the thing about Amy's, I guess they use, like, all the finest ingredients, like, they actually give a shit, you know, <laughs> even if their stuff is frozen, it's, it's, like, good quality. Um, so this is a no cheese pizza made with organic shiitake mushrooms, red onions, and fire roasted red peppers. Um, there's also artichokes on this. There's just no cheese. So there's no like fake cheese on this one. The other one did have fake cheese. It was a vegan supreme pizza. So it also had meatless sausage and meatless pepperoni, which I didn't even realize when I had ordered it. I just thought it was gonna be like another vegetable pizza, but with cheese, but. So this one doesn't have any meat on it. So I added a little bit of my frozen shrimp and just threw it in the oven um, just to give, add a little, little extra protein. Um, but I'm hoping this is as good as the Vegan Supreme Paints Pizza by Amy's I had yesterday because if it is, let me tell you guys, this just came out of the oven, it's really hot. It was so good, I recommend it. I'll put a picture right here for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Go get this pizza. Even if you're not vegan, I don't care. The meat on it, the meat on it tasted just fine, like good, you know, just like regular meat. All right, sorry vegans, I did put shrimp on here, so that's a sh little shrimpy. It's so hot right now, but I don't care. I 
that was a bite without the, sh the shrimp. That was just straight pizza. Oh my god. I love it. It's so good. Mm. <laughs> wow. So, I do like the vegan supreme pizza I had yesterday a tiny bit better than this. This is same quality, same goodness. It just doesn't have that fake meat on it that I really liked. And also it doesn't have that fake cheese on it, which I really liked. So, that's the only place it differs, and it's just because it's missing two ingredients that I really liked. Everything else, the mixture of all of the different kinds of vegetables on here is amazing. The crust is the best part. Like, listen to this. It's a really, you know, it's not too thin. It's not too thick. It's really like soft inside crust, but really crunchy outside. Really fluffy. Mm. All right. I've been talking a lot about Daya products. All their stuff is dairy free and maybe gluten free. I don't know, mostly dairy free. Um, they do a lot of vegan stuff, like the vegan mac and cheese that I really like. I've been talking a lot about Daya and I love their stuff, but let me tell you, I did try their vegan pizza. Um, and it doesn't even come close to this. It was good. It was like really good. I ate it, you know. Um, this was like a while back. But Amy's Pizza wins. In terms of mac and cheese, I gotta go with Daya for vegan stuff. But in terms of vegan pizza, Amy's all the way. So one serving is two pieces if you cut it into six. So one serving is only like 280 calories. Um, I don't remember what this costs, but... I'll put a little price tag here for you guys who are curious. Yeah. So review this. Okay. So because I like the vegan Supreme pizza better, I have to get that. I literally have to give that a 10 out of 10 and I don't do that often. Oh, I forgot about the crust here. Mm. You guys know me. I rarely give a 10 out of 10. But yeah, for the Vegan Supreme Amy's Pizza, 10 out of 10. So this one, the Roasted Vegetable No Cheese Pizza by Amy's, I have to give a 9.9 because .9 it's just a smidge not as amazing to me. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. I love the artichoke hearts on here. And the mushrooms because they're shiitake mushrooms. See, I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms, but I'm in love with shiitake mushrooms and I'm so glad they use those on this pizza. Mmm. <laughs> All right, before this turns into a mukbang, you guys, <laughs> I'll let you guys get going and um, well, don't go anywhere because we have some more vlog coming up. So stay tuned for whatever the next segment of this vlog is and I'm gonna keep munching away on my dinner. I told you guys I would show you my spreadsheet um, that I've been tracking my macros, well, pretty much all my nutrients on and here it is. So I've been tracking all my foods in my fitness pal, which is really cool because they can give you pretty much exact like all the you know carbs fiber protein whatever that you eat um, all the grams and stuff so um, I'll scroll down it's just kind of like what I've been doing um, but at the bottom here I have a section that talks about the, my averages of like what I average every single day eating and then also what my goals are for every single day so you can see the ones in green so these ones in green here mean I'm doing good <laughs> like I am matching my goals or exceeding them the orange I, is just no <laughs> not close um you can see my protein i really need to eat more protein um i'd like to eat a little bit less carbs um i'm pretty good on fat let's just say i'm you know fats i'm, I'm making it <laughs> uh cholesterol not the biggest deal in the world but i'd like to be under 300 milligrams sodium is a huge problem for me um because i still do eat like lunch meat and stuff there's just a lot of sodium in foods that you know are pre-packaged and stuff so uh, even cooking on my own, sometimes I find that, like, I add some salt to things and, like, kind of adds up. So, potassium is definitely under, so I really want to balance out my sodium potassium. 
Um, so yeah, these are my goals and let me know what you guys think, if these are good goals or if I should be focusing on something else or if I'm just like doing great. Um, I do talk to my doctor in two days, so I'm so excited. I might even show her this. I might print this out and show it to her. Um, but I really just want some guidance. <laughs> uh, felt like tracking this stuff, at least for now, is good for me. Um, you know, with all the changes I'm doing to my diet, making sure I'm still getting all of my nutrients. I do track like vitamin A, vitamin C, um, all that stuff as well. Um, and I take a multivitamin every day for women. So um, I'm not too worried about that, but I still like to make sure I'm doing well. Um, you know, calcium, things like that. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you.